who Yogi entered the cellar. He had a long wait in the asked me if I would record a voiceover for one of these painting videos, so that's what I'm going to do today. First off, I just wanted to apologize for two things. One is for the light levels in this video. The day I recorded it, the light was really in and out, so it doesn't look great at some points. The second is that my head makes a few appearances which is really annoying, but honestly, I don't know how anyone paints these videos without their head getting in the way. I have to do such small details that I have to lean way over the paper. So, as you saw, this drawing just started out as a little character sketch in my sketchbook of a girl reading while she's walking. So I just took that sketch and transferred it to my watercolor paper using my light box. I just lightly traced over it with pencil and then just kind of filled in sort of a vague background idea. I knew I just wanted some shrubbery and some trees maybe and I wanted it to be very autumnal with warm colors, yellows and oranges and everything. So I just went in and kind of lightly laid down some washes. I didn't really have a plan for the colors, so I like to just start lightly and slowly build up the intensity of the color. Just carefully painting around the character. Sometimes you can use masking fluid, but I found that it doesn't work great on some types of paper. It can really wreck the paper when you take it off, so I prefer not to use it and just carefully paint around. Already by this point, I was feeling like this piece was kind of a disaster. <laughs> I just hate the way the color is pooling and drying so unevenly. This is the Fabriano Studio watercolor hot press paper, and it's not a favorite of mine. Even though I already hated it, I decided to carry on and start painting the character to see if that made it come together a little bit more for me. Does anyone else have to spin their paper all over the place while they're painting? I can never tape down mine nice and neatly like some people do because I have to be able to move it around. Here I'm adding just a little bit of darker color to the shrubs behind her, just to add a little depth and to try and make it not look so flat. I decided I should do that before working on the character anymore, just in case the colors bled. Thank you. 
ended up touching up that shrub right behind her so many times. I think what I tend to do is start off with way too light of color and then I end up having to go back again and again to get it to the tone that it actually should be. But I decided to carry on with the character and start filling in her clothes and everything even though overall I pretty much hated the painting at this point. I do love painting all the little details on the clothes and stuff. It's probably one of my favorite parts. Once I started adding all the detail to the character, I ended up liking it a lot more and I knew that I couldn't just abandon it and start over. So I decided that I would keep pushing through and somehow find a way to fix it. Sometimes even if I'm really hating a painting, that feeling of I'm going to push through anyway can be really helpful because it kind of makes the whole thing feel less precious. So I'm not as worried about, you know, doing something to mess up the whole thing. And that kind of frees me up to experiment a little bit more. So at this point I decided to bring in color pencil and just kind of experiment a bit and see if adding more texture with them would help this piece out a little bit. I've always used color pencil in my paintings, but usually it's very lightly and maybe just adding some little accents or outlining things, but since this one I kind of already hated it and didn't care if I ruined it, I decided to just really go for it and add a lot of texture. I decided to be a little bit more experimental than I normally would. So again, trying to not be as subtle, just trying to bring in sort of different colors than I normally would. 
and layering them. I also usually do outlining with a tiny brush and paint, but I decided to just use color pencil for that this time, which is great because it's much faster, although it's a little harder to be precise, but just adding that little bit of outline really helps her pop up from the background a bit. Truly, once I started going into the background with a lot more color pencil and just adding tons of texture and different color variation and stuff, it really changed this whole piece for me. It was so much fun, for one thing, and it just added a ton more depth and it stopped it looking so flat and uninteresting. And at this point, I started to really like this piece a lot and I'm really happy with how it came out. This ended up being one of those helpful drawings that happened sometimes in that it just gave me a little push that I needed to start using color pencils in a way that I actually had been wanting to for a while, but I was just feeling a little too nervous to actually start. Even though it's a pretty small change and it probably doesn't seem like much from the outside, I really feel like it's given the work that I've done since then um, a really different dimension. and. It's just a little evolution in my style, but I think it really is making my work a lot better. 
and it's also making it a little bit more fun and interesting for me. Anyway, those are some non-deep thoughts for me, just a few little observations I had while working on this piece and again while watching it back. I can hear out a letter in library. But don't worry, I fix it. I decided to leave that part in because I think it's pretty funny and it's very classic me. Usually when I do lettering, I'm drawing rather than writing, so they're just shapes rather than letters, if that makes sense. And I tend to leave things out or reverse things because I'm only thinking about the shape, not about the letter. find this as a print in my shop which I will link below. I really hope you like this video. Just let me know if you have any questions or anything in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!